My name is John Anderson. Um, 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 I was born 8th of July 1943, 74-year-old. And here, here we are at the library to say a bit about what I know of Harvey Bay. I've li lived here all, all my life, and my father lived here all his life, and his father lived here ne nearly all his life. And his father lived in Pioba, but he worked in Maribor at Wilson Arts Sawmill. He was an e e engine driver at Wilson Arts Sawmill for many, many years, and then, uh, and then, okay, and then they eventually shifted to Harvey Bay, where the RSL home is, RSL uh, Baycrest is now. That's where, that's where they, that, 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 that was their farm. So they had that for many, many years. And then uh, grandfather's father, he would work at the uh, Wilson Arts Sawmill, and he'd walk from there to Pilebury every Saturday afternoon with his wheel, with his wheelbarrow and his groceries. And then he would be home for the Saturday night and Sunday night he'd walk back to Maribyrn, and that's why they did it, see? And then, okay, and then when that got going, then they bought a place, they bought a place in Main Street of Pyre, but right there where you go into, into Coles, they bought a, a, a big house there. When they came to Harvey Bay, there was about six houses in Pyalba, and then, um, okay, six houses in Pyalba, and then and my grandfather, he started a blacksmith shop uh, in that area, right that area there, and that went for many, many years. Uh, I've sort of made things wrong. I should have started grandfather. He did his trade in Mirabur as a wheel, 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 right for Anderson, the blacksmith in Mirabur, see? So he did his trade in Mirabur. Then when he came to Harvey Bay and, and, they, and, they, and they bought that land in Main Street, and then uh, and that, and that wasn't with the RSL, it was behind the RSL, right up to, 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 Hunt, to Hunt, Hunter Street, all the whole block right through. Anyway, so, so they had a blacksmith shop there for many years, and then, uh, he, got, and then he got into, in, into saw, sawing timber as, as a saw, saw, saw miller. And that went for many years until the depression came. He couldn't sell timber. <sighs> but in the time I had the sawmill, he, he built the first motor garage that was beside the Methodist Church, the old Methodist Church, and they had sold overland cars for many years and petrol in, in square tins. Anyway, uh, and then that went for many years. And then, and, then, and then Grandfather thought, well, going good. And the depression came, they couldn't sell timber. So then he thought, well, what will I do? So in that time, in that time while he was throwing the timber, they cut the decking for the original Murangan Pier. So they had to have a DC generator in, in, all running off the steam engine to make lights for the sawmill so they could work at night time, they're working day and night, see? Okay, the people, they both said, oh, look at that, Anderson's got power, why can't we have power? They, they talked to the council, and oh, they couldn't do it. So grandfather, when the depression came, they couldn't sell timber, so he went to the State Electricity Commission in Brisbane and told him what he wanted to do. He wanted to build a power station. And they said, oh, yeah. A young bloke. So right there where Coles is is where the power station was built. The power station was built there, and then um, and then uh, it had to be and they had to have a uh, uh, A. E. Action was a consulting engineer, a man from Brisbane, and then he was their engineer over the, over the whole thing. So the power station was started right there where Coles comes in, and then and then and then the wires went from there up Main Street. Up to up to Scarness, uh, up to uh, the Vernon Hotel first, and out to Point Vernon, and then down Zephyr Street with the historical society societies, down the road, and all the way to Yarangan, and that was 415 three-phase power. A very interesting story because in Queensland at that time, all small power station was DC -D 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 power. They stipulated that when you build this power station, young fella, it's got to be 415 three-phase power. It's got to run. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because most small power stations knocked off at about midnight and they turned off and they start in the morning again. But this one was this one was different to any other one. Anyway, that's the that was the start of, of the modern power. It had to be the Brisbane system. The Brisbane system. But in that time they had the power station, the engines weren't running very hard at night because people didn't use power like they used today. So grandfather got an ice pump and make, made, made ice in, in, in the back of the power station to use up the power to make the engines work hard at night time. And he supplied the fishermen with, 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 with ice and all the people of the bar there, and they had an ice delivery. Okay, then they done that from, from uh, in there. And then when they did leave that there, then my father built a new ice works right next to, behind the Shell Garage in Main Street of Piper, where the dam is, big dam there. And that went for many, many years until I sold that to gardeners. And then uh, that, that the gardeners, and then um, and then my father went across the road to where Jack's Furniture is now, and then built a new uh, workshop, and that was our, and that's where I first started work in that workshop. And then Dad started engineering, general engineering for anybody, farmers or or, or anybody you can think of, all sorts of repairs. At, at, I used to work on the steam crane at the pier because I used to help him do that, and. Uh, 
Okay, and then it went on and on and on. And that's how, it, and uh, and then in that time, mm, they built it up on the top of Main Street of Pie, around the corner, there was a place called the Convalescent Home. They, that was like a, a home for people when they came out of hospital in Maribel, they go there and rest and recuperate. It was run by uh, Sister Horton, Sister Horton, she ran that. And that was, because not many people know about that now, because it's all forgotten about, but it was, and I see it's still there today. And that was um, that was a hospital for people that come out of Mirab Hospital, and um, and then then my uncle Bill he started the steam law law the business up in Main Main, Main Street up uh, no no in in Hunter Street, and now it's up in up where are we up up in Pyle the, the big law who started there first, and they did lots of things and uh, most things that were started in Harvey Bay were started by Andrew Anderson and his brother Niels. Niels was a council after a while in the council. There were only two councils those days. <laughs> And not so many arguments, <laughs> yeah, but um, but then anyway, and, and 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 here we are today. But there's, uh, just that's the way it happened. My my relatives came from Denmark. My uh, anyway, they came from Denmark on on a ship. It's called the Alalardus. It it was docked in, in in down near Melbourne first at Port. I can't think of the name of the place. Anyway, my great great grandmother she died on just before they got there because she had some terrible disease from the ship. See. And Roy Christie's uh, people came out on 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 the same boat. It was called the Alardus, and uh, it was and it was very uncomfortable. It was, it was there was three hundred people on a hundred foot long boat, and it was took them six months to come from Denmark to Australia. Quite a few people died, and and I think the first mate he he jumped overboard. He, 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 he they, they, they went it was it was very very bad times, and um, and then they came up here. To Harvey Bay, to Maribor first. That's why they came to Maribor first. <coughs> Sorry, to Maribor first. Yes, that's how it all happened. Uh, in the ice works, my father had the ice works in the the gas producer, putting wood in the gas producer, and the and the, and the fire coming out of the holes in the gas producer. And our grandfather Carl come used to come down from Maribor uh, on Saturday morning to see us, and then uh, they were putting wood wool up on the top and. I must have been in my pram because I can. I would have had, would have had them in for that, uh, that time. Anyway, I can still grandfather was hand up the wood wool and it was just amazing. And then they put it in the top of the, in the in the in the top of the and they put the wood in, in the gas gas producer and that was the same as the ice work. The power station went on gas too. I didn't tell you that. And uh, yeah, just amazing, amazing man. He could and whatever he wanted to turn his hand to, he he did and he could do it well. Mum, my mother lived in Maryborough. She was a coral. And, uh, um, they lived in Unity Street. Grandfather worked at 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 at, uh, at War War Walkers Limited, and so did Uncle Jack and Uncle Sam and uh, Uncle Uncle Kevin. Well, he had your people. Anyway, they all uh, yeah they 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 li 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 lived in Maribor. And, and and the okay, and the reason why this all happened, uh, Artie Messer was the dentist in Maribor. Artie Messer, and he used to come down to Harvey Bay one day a week to fix people's teeth. He was a dentist, and my mother worked for him. See, anyway, my grandfather built a uh, uh, a nice little house where, right there, where the where the new part of the RSL is now, and that's where the dental surgery was. So my mother came to there, and she met my father, and that's all how it happened. <laughs> so there you go, and act, and then then. And then many years later, then my wife and I lived in that little house. That's right in the in the end of the RSL where the new part is on Hunter Street. That's where our house was for many years. And that's where we lived, right there, beside the steam lawn and the gospel halls on this side, and the steam lawn there. And Janice and I lived there. And then over there was grandfather's house, and next door was, was grandfather's mother and father's house, grandmother's mother and father's house over there, and Auntie Mary, and all that whole settlement was all Andersons, the whole right. The whole area, right where the car park is. My brother, as Ron, Ron and John, and when, when my brother worked uh, at the works. Uh, he, he, my brother worked, went to Walkers to, to for a start, see, and then and, and then he came back to Harvey Bay, and we worked in the workshop down at uh, Anderson Engineering in Main Street of Pyalba, and then uh, we sold Ford tractors, uh, heaps of them, lots of Ford tractors. Oh, who knows, lots of them, and secondhand tractors, and repaired them and fixed them and. From here to Harvey Bay to Meribah to Bundaberg and Churchill was the whole region eventually. I, I went to Pyalba School and my auntie Annie was the first girl ever enrolled at the Harvey Bay Pyalba School over a hundred and something years ago. Because I went to the centenary of this and her fir first the name was read out Annie Anderson. First girl ever enrolled at Pyalba School. It's a long time ago. But before the school was there, it was up, up near the golf, golf, golflings. You know, the golflings are up there. Anyway, they were going to shift the school from there down there where it is now. 
um, over Christmas. They got the school all shifted down there, and the day before school started, a big wind come blew the blew the school the school off the stumps and poked the stumps through the floor. Anyway, so the kids had a bit more holiday. <laughs> yeah. We had some wonderful teachers, but we had some teachers that should have never been teachers. One bloke went to asylum, another fellow hung himself. I mean, this is pretty serious business. He, he'd be sitting at the class, at your desk, and he'd come behind you, and he'd hit you across the back of your head so hard, you'd hit your head on the bench, you'd black you out. That went on. And, and, and lots of other kids. I, he ruined many kids' lives. You know, people today have problems at school because, because the, the kids run, 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 run on the school. The teachers got no say, but those days it was terrible. And the same when my father went to school. My father had two lumps in his hand, big lumps. I said, Dad, well, what's that lump? I said, Put down those hitch with a big uncle wood. He's going to crack back the hand, broke the bones, both had big lumps in his hands. Yeah. Now, many, many years ago, I, I have a photograph of my grandfather and Tom Luckley. He was a, 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 my grandfather helped the islands a lot, up in Island the Road, helped them a lot. Anyway, that's why you never hear grandfather's name mentioned much in things in the Harvey Bay. He was more interested in helping people instead of making a name for himself. That's the difference, anyway. But anyway, I, I, my grandfather and, and Tom Luckley had a photograph taken of him outside the little gospel hall, just up behind, up this side of Burns, where Burns Brothers is down that aisle on the road. Anyway, I know the little gospel hall still is up in the youth camp place. And I said to Dudley, I said, Dudley, can you and I get our photos taken in the same place as our, my grandfather and, and your ancestor? Yeah. For many years, when I was a young fellow, I started in Main Street of Pipe in Dad's engineering shop. And then when that was, and then, then, then after that, when they went out to to do, do, do along South Road and we started our own, own engineering shop. Then my brother kept on with what he was doing and I did that. And we stayed, we were there for about until uh, uh, for about seven years ago, I suppose. Then we sold that to Kerry Campbell. Then we went out to to do, uh, to uh, No Noble Road and bought a, ca bought, a sh bought a cattle place. And we would have cattle and sheep. That's supposed to be retirement, but just great fun, working all the time. Yes. Because the Andersons, they started off, like I said, the power station. And they work ridiculous hours. You know, if I told you what you think, this bloke's talking rubbish. But continuous, seven days a week, the power station was run on sex suction gas. That means, that means it, they made their own gas. They had, down where the RSL car park is, there was row, I can remember this little boy, rows and rows of cordwood, that's rows of wood, just wood, just pile up as much as you can see, all in long lengths. And every morning they'd come up and they'd take some wood and they'd saw it in the blocks that long, and then that was enough for the day, and then they'd, then, then they'd just keep putting wood in those big gas producers, most of the big producers, where they put, keep putting the wood in the top, keep wood in, keep on the top. As the wood comes down, it burns, it turns into charcoal, and what comes off charcoal is a gas called carbon monoxide gas, and the engines just suck the gas off the, f gas off the fire, off, off, the, uh, off the charcoal, and it goes through scrubbers and cleaners, and, then it goes, and the big engines run. They were big engines, they were, the fly was weighed through three tonnes, about 12 foot high of the fly was a massive big engine, a big twin cylinder cro Crosby engine they were. And Uncle Bill was part of that, and so was my father, and Uncle Neil's, and my grandfather. It was, it was an amazing, amazing set up the way it worked. But that's what really got Harvey Bay going, is that power. You imagine, and power on the ice, of course, but mainly the power. There's no power on the boat. They had gas lights and like uh, kerosene lanterns, and yeah, wasn't much place. <laughs> and then that's what really got the bay going, is that power. Power came in the bay and Uncle Bill was seven year old when that started and then his job was to turn the tap on and start the engine and <laughs> seven him and his little fella. And that power. The Pyobra Electric Company it was called. Yeah, I'll tell you this, this is very interesting. Now <clears throat> you go up Main Street of Pyobra to where the ran roundabout is, and you come back two houses and from there right down to where you get your license. I was fourteen year old at the time, and Uncle Uncle Neil, this is Dad's uncle, uh, yeah, Dad's uncle, he said, Johnny said do you want that block of land? I said, oh, I don't know. What did that for? He said, you can have it. That was from, that was a quarter of a major to Pyobar. Right from up there, right down to where you get your license. And I went down to the workshop. I said to Dad, I said, Dad, Uncle Leo said, I can have that land. He said, what did that for? It's all salt pans. So I said, I said, give it to some, give it to some, some, somebody else. So he did. See, land had no value, no value in land. And then when our lot was putting the power out at Point Vernon, uh, going from the bay, uh, Pyobar, and where the, and where the, uh, the, the uh, sign says Point Vernon and Pyobar, a council said to Uncle Bill, that's Dad's brother, he said, Andy, if you give us a thousand quid, you can have Point Vernon. He said, well, what do I want that for? See, I mean, you can't, well, I'm telling you this, or you think this is rubbish, but this is true stories. And then, yes, and that's the way it was. Mm. And not much, land was worth nothing. See, after, when the, when the, when the Japs were coming, well, the people just left and drove. They said, pay the, you pay the, uh, the, the rates and you can have the land. It was just worth nothing. And it, and it was close. 
And Uncle Bill was telling me the story when he was a young fellow. I'd go up on Diamond Point at night time with all the lights turned off in the houses. And you could see the lights in the water going up, going up the ch ch channel. It, it, it only had to, had to be in Japs because they were on the other side of the island. And when the Mahino came up, and I knew a fellow that, <coughs> Mr. Hanson, he used to run trips from Hook Point up to Fraser, Fraser Island when the Mahino ca came up. When the pair first started, originally as a rower line come down here, main street of Pile, but it was going to go out to Point, Point Vernon. That's where the rower line was going to go. And, and again, the ships were going to come out that way, out, out, out the deep or out of the point. But Uncle Neil, this is Dad's uncle, he said, he said, politicians like they always are, it was changing and went that way, down to down, down, down the Orangan. So, okay, and then, and then they got the job of cutting the decking for the pier grandfather and Uncle Neil. This is, good. this is what got them on their feet. You imagine two young blokes getting the order of all this timber, eight, eight before inches in full with the pier, for about a mile and a quarter edge to edge. And that's what started the power because they had to work at night time. They made lights to work the power station and then and, and they were to able to work the saw, sawmill. And then that's, that's how it started. Then, okay, I didn't tell you before, but then... Then there was a wire, and I can remember the poles are still there. Well, little boy went down to grandfather's house, across to grandma's house, the wire across there, then to grandfather's mother and father's house, of course, and then they wanted to cross the gospel in the corner where Santa 15 is now. Because there, the, all that little area had lights at night time. No one in the bay had lights. That was the only place with lights. And because the people got a bit envious, you know, why can't, why can't we have that power? And then they, and, they, and the council said, no, they wouldn't have that modern stuff. They, would, they, would, they don't want that stuff here. You know, like councillors, you can't have the power here. We don't want that stuff. So that's when grandfather took it on himself. He had no help from anybody. He got no government grants. He got no nothing from anybody. All he got from government was trouble. And he built the power station <coughs> and ran it. The family did for all those, <coughs> for all, 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 all those years. Yes, until until 1946. That's when it stopped. Yeah, and then Howard Power Station was the matter. <coughs> Much better already having Howard Power Station. It was a steam fired. It was a, a, a turbine, a steam turbine power station, which is a much better idea than suction gas. And, the, and then they just... See, what happened in the early days, this town was so fortunate that other towns, when the power came into their town, from the they had the power first, DC power, all your houses were wired up. The mains came in, so you, cut, you had to change your motors, your light, everything had to be changed. The Harvey Bay was made right in the first place. Everybody gained because... You didn't have to change your motors, your wiring, your lights. Everything was just cut the wire, join it on, the bay's working. It was a wonderful gift to Harvey Bay. That was, it was a miracle, actually. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> when I was opening a new Wide Bay Regional Electricity Board across the road from our workshop, all the big wigs come from everywhere, all the politicians, they're all over there. And, and at the front door of the workshop, they was inside working. And there's a policeman standing there with a gun. Now, this is a true story. I was there. I talked to the policeman. He, he, stood, he stood there with a gun. And I knew the fellow well. I said, why, why are you here for? And Melbourne his name. I said, why are you here for? Oh, I just told him to be here. See, they were very afraid that my father was going to say something because what they were talking wasn't the truth. wasn't the truth. And Dad didn't say anything. But after it was all finished, he walked over and said, you know, what your fellow said, that, that, that wasn't the way it was at all. Now, it, was, it was common, dear. It was common. Just taken over. And, you know, Grandfather even tried to put the price of power down when he owned the power station, but the government wouldn't allow him to. He said, the power's too dear, I want to put it down. Everything was controlled. He, he was controlled by the government. Even though it was private enterprise, he wanted to put the power down, and they said, no, you can't do that. So, mm -hmm. that's it, that's what it was. But I'll soon forget that black policeman there with a the gun, in case my father said something. That's as true as I'm sitting here. He was standing there, and I was standing beside him, and talk, 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 talking to him. Yeah. Anyway, that's the way that was. Been an amazing life. Harvey Bay is in a good place, a very quiet place, and lots of wonderful people here. And the fishermen were at Jurangan. My father used to work long hours to keep make the ice for the fishermen. They come anytime they anytime they want ice, they'd come up near and the old trucks and and get ice. Cause see, there was no refrigeration those days in the boats. See, and that uh, well, Nicky Schultz tells me that before that they used to put uh, mangrove leaves and stuff in, the, in amongst the fish and then somebody else to try and keep the fish cold, see? But when Dad said the ice works, well, that was marvellous. It was a godsend from them because they'd come up and get the ice, go out fishing and put the ice amongst the fish. and make it. it was just good for everybody. Just a great thing. Garnish was the main part of Harvey Bay of the night time. Of, of Christmas time or Saturday night, or, um, Scarnish was the main area. And what's his name? I can't think of the fellow that had, that had the dance... Uh, dan uh, yeah, can't think of his name. He used to run the dance up the top. <coughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that was the main part of Harvey Bay of, of for the uh, nine, nine, nine night life. Harvey Bay was, and never had much to do with talkie or Yarangan because there was, you know, it's an amazing thing when the <coughs> you started asking about the pier, and I forgot about it. 
Okay, when they so when they, the pier, my dad had the engineering shop. He used to do a lot, do lots of repairs on the pier, and that steam crane at the, on the it's on the picture side. And I can remember once he took the him and dad, him and uncle Neil, my father and grandfather took that whole big derrick off the top. Anyway, got it all put on the ground. They brought up Harvey Bay on, on a train, I think it was, and they put it all inside the worst and made a whole new big boom for it. And then uh, we're still getting quite often do repairs on it. And then and, and then my time come along, and then. Um, uh, I was supposed to be watching, Saturday afternoon it was, and there was nobody around, and I was supposed to be watching for sparks off the well. And because the sparks were coming down, and I was too busy going, I went down the back, went fishing down the side. And I kept the whole, this is, this is not many people know this, but the whole deck was on fire, the whole place on fire. The reason why it was such a big fire, because there was a deck, and a deck on top of it, and the deck of the pig, and all that, all over the years they put the, the, the sugar bags on the, when the, when the bulk loading started first, the crane would pick up the, all the bags in one big pile, take them over, and they'd cut the top of the bag, and the whole place was full of fluff between all the cracks in the boards, see? And, and that's what made the fire worse. And look, here's all this fire. What am I going to do? <sighs> I found a hose and put it out. Oh, flop, man. I thought it was a goner. It would have burnt the pier down. That was, there would, there would be no pier. Uh, that would be 30 years before the, the pier was finished, you know, I suppose, anyway. Put the fire out, but we was always was always repairing. And we used to go out. And they give us a permission to go out in our car. We drive our car out, or our vehicle out onto the pier, to uh, take the gear out to do the repairs. I used to ride my motorbike out to go out there and help. On the, anyway, one day, this is a very interesting. A fella, the chief, my, f they, um, makes his name. Anyway, I can't think of his name. The man looked after the pier. Hmm. He Turton, e e Eric Turton, rang. He said, Arthur. My father had to make some drills longer in the main street of Pilbury in the workshop. Anyway, he said, Arthur, he said, the ship's going in 10 minutes. Can you get the drills here? I said, yep, I'll get them there. So I shoved them in my shirt at the workshop. I drove from there right to the back as fast as the motorbike could go. There was no, just go far. I got on the pier. I drove out on the pier, flat out, and I could see all these fishing rods all come doing this because they could hear this rattling always come like pretty fast. And I went across the gap, and they had planks out. I went across the gaps, and I... Then I got into the end of the pier, and and the, and the, and, the, and the chief chief engineer was on the gangplank. They had a gangplank swung so one across the wharf, and uh, he put his hand up, took the shirt and drilled in my pocket, and hand it, and he blew the whistle and up went the gangplank off with the boat. And on the way back, I had to stop because I couldn't get across the gap because they had so many boards out. I had to lift the boat across the hull. I drove choom, straight across the gap. <laughs> anyway, that was. But we did lots of things out in the pier, a lot of repair work. I was always repairing things for the pier. Uh, the, even with the big dive, the diving bell, the big crank to, to pump the air while the divers in the bottom pump and fix all that. And all, everything that needed repair, we repaired it from. That was for long, long, many, many years actually. My, uh, yeah, I met my wife. Well, I, I've, I've, I've always no, 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 always no, no. See, um, Janice's father knew me before Janice was born. See, when Janice came, when Bob Campica came back from the war, that's Janice's father. He used to work in the in a, in a, a place where he used to rent a space in my grand my father's work shed to start a to be a mechanic and then over night time he used to work in the power station at Anderson's power station but after the, the government take over and I always known Bob Peake and then and then we've always been good friends then and 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 and, and I gave her a fourteenth birthday present and we had then we had to wait until it was all old enough to get married so that's the way it is <laughs> it was a great story yeah good story. I have two children, Beth, Beth, and Bruce, and Beth lives in Cairns, and then and, and she's a, a kindy teacher in Cairns, and her husband works for the uh, department of, or government department for looking after young people with the problems, and then they have two children, anyway, and then on, and their son Bruce, he uh, he has six 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 girls: Maria, Jemima, Benita, Lucia, Viva, and Sefi, and uh, so the, and and those children are seventh generation continuous in Harvey Bay. That's amazing, seven continuous. Harvey Bay, because yeah, my, my great-great-grandfather, he's buried in the Nickenbar Cemetery behind Jeff Keen's uh, Keltex. Yes. My family say, Dad, you should do your own thing instead of helping everybody by the body else. That's my whole life's been helping, doing always working day and night. At the workshop there, we go, you start in the morning about 7 o'clock and then you'd, you'd work all day and then go have tea and go back till about, until about 10, 11 o'clock at night and you come home and you get wake up in the morning and do the same thing next night. Always helping people. That's been my life, just helping people, doing things. That's it, I suppose. That's a, that's a lesson. Done too much, I think. That's the biggest lesson. Done too much. <laughs>